Copyright 2017 Win Your Brand. All rights reserved. This video is subject to copyright owned by Win Your Brand. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this video is expressly prohibited, unless Win Your Brand has explicitly granted its prior written consent. All other rights reserved. Okay, so. So we had uh, insight on the structure, the model. We had insight about what kind of material you can attract people with and what kind of dialogue. And when we came to uh, prospecting, we talked a little bit about during this prospecting, how you can overcome objections. I only shared it cost too much. However, in the workbook which we had before, we had about 83 different objections, right? So there was like, I don't know your company, I don't use that. There's so many other objections, which was part of the workbook last time. So the point here is, if we cover prospecting now, so we cover prospecting, we describe what kind of communication we have here. That's right. And if you are from prospecting, getting them to be customers, now we have to worry about the customer status. That's right. So this is the messaging to, to get them to become customers? This is a message when they are lead. Yeah. And you want them to sign up to the next level. In your situation, there is no client. They cannot test out the system for free for a month or so. That's right. This guy? This guy, yeah. Because with this guy, they either do the work or don't do the work. So he does not have a client stage. Well, I guess the client stage is my one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, my initial interview. That's a prospect. This is a prospecting stage. This is when you have the first two dialogues, right? Well, but that prospecting stage is when, when my staff books the appointment. It's if, the, if you model it in this way, you model it in this way. Right, so they phone in and they go, hey, can Mike help me? I, I have this kind of business. Let's get a little appointment for you. Okay, if you model it in this that's way, it's great. That kind of view is the, it's a prospecting because now you've advanced them to the client. They go, well, oh, Mike. Can hang on a second. I'm going to challenge that a bit. I think prospecting is a two-part, two, two step system in yours. It's getting them to you. Prospecting one, prospecting two. Well, it, it is kind of because when, when somebody calls in, right. okay, and you're um, non-subject matter staff schedules an appointment with you, yeah. that's actually a, an appointment to do prospecting because they're really engaging you and because the next step is to actually sell them, uh, become either a client or a customer. Okay. The question that he's asking is that you don't have a free, like a client is, they're getting free service from you. So you've got a product that is free that you can keep them, the bodies warm while you try and convert right, them. Right. So what is that free service that you have? Do you have like a... He, he, he doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's trying okay. to say. For this yeah. particular model of business, okay, doesn't have. He know. may create a different business which he may have. Oh, he can, what, the no, point I want to say here is all of these objections are, about to are relevant as well if a client stage exists. Okay. Yeah. So all of these objections here are relevant for the client stage. Yeah. So good? the client stage could be like what? Like 90 minute seminar. Yeah, free like seminar. 20 minute uh, uh, seminar. One day workshop. Whatever I will do at Open no, answers. at no, pr at no, v no cost. Well, there's no, uh, but my 90 minute one on one is. It's a detail of, of all of the different levels of service I'm going to provide. This is still prospecting. Yeah. If you have a workshop that says, here's here's our, our, the tax rules, here's how you can apply it in your business, that's informational session, Right. that is client. Uh, it could client. be a client. Essentially, whether I'm giving it to you one-on-one -on -one or whether I'm giving it to the whole so group here. The right. point you want to make it's sure... It's still a 90 minute, to me it's a 90 minute workshop. I, one I, I, under, I understand, the point I want to make sure is here, when I do prospecting, I will invite people to my free seminar. Right. Okay. In your case, both of these cases, both of these models are amalgamating into one. Because the lead will phone in, they will sign up, and then you will take them through this step to a customer right away. They sign a contract right away. There is nothing right, there is nothing wrong. This is what is it. So, so the point I want to say is, 
if somebody has the complementary offer or the no cost offer at the end of the no cost offer they must have a sales process where they have to be ready to overcome this objection so you wouldn't consider my 90 minute free session to be my one-on-one -on -one workshop I uh, I don't know how much information you share over there or how much information you share about your actual contracting process so I don't know I'm not I'm not exposed to it so yeah so I I, I, I don't know it, it, I think it would depend on what they think they're coming in for so if you're if they're coming in to find out more about what you offer right that's prospecting if you are saying let me look at your uh, your I'll give you a free uh, coaching like I would do like yeah. I would give you a free coaching uh, advice mm -hmm. so you would give me your problems I'd solve uh, some issues for you and then I say okay th I've, I've resolved one issue given you this free complimentary session normally it's 300 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever it is but it's free to me that's a client because I could have charged for the same thing somebody else to charge money this right. person I gave free for the hope that they will become a customer so it depends are they coming to find out more about your business or are they coming to be educated to me, that's the distinction between... And I don't want to hang on the distinction because okay. it doesn't matter. All what matters here is you understand there are some steps yeah. and these steps need different language. Okay. okay? So if you want to look at what kind of structure for a client base, if you look at the selling through presentation, which is a workshop we had before, the three days workshop or whatever version of it, this it will be a good example of how I can get my client in a seminar setting or in a webinar setting or in a 20 minute seminar, webinar, whatever it is. Okay? Make sense? Now, I'm coming to the customer stage. So the customer is to find somebody who will pay money. So what kind of language the customer will need? Features. The customer will pay for the feature. That's right. So, what kind of question can I ask my customer? Now, this is. I guess it's, it's what stage? Like, have they already plucked out the money, or are you now? Customer is somebody paying me money, getting invoice, and receiving my service. Right. So they already have the features. They already. So already they are now experiencing the features. Okay. I'm answering myself now. Okay. So what kind of questions or what kind of dialogue oh, okay. can I have with my customer? So basically how, how, how is it going for you? So yeah, so this feedback. basically is a customer experience or customer service or customer satisfaction dialogues. So I, if I deliver any of these services through my seminar, my, my, my workshop, your session tonight is one of the eight or whatever, one of the 16 sessions, that's right? So I should be able to ask at the end, what value did you get? Not a straightforward question, but a question along this, did this meet your expectation? Do you agree? Will you use this material? You will find me quite often answer, asking you guys these questions to make sure that I have, you like the, the content, I make sure you the content is relevant to you, I make sure there's an agreement around the table as a consensus or uh, uh, agreement that this content is really valuable. So all of these are pillars for compliance. Okay? Make sense? <coughs> What kind of objections you may have in a customer situation? Oh, uh, after they purchased your product? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, this is not what I expected was going to be delivered. Okay. So there is a class of objections. Hmm. This is after the sale, right? This is after the sale. That's right. So. What are what kind of objections you have here? This is, a, this is a different set of objections here, which you should address right away. What will happen if you don't address these objections? Bring it up. And what will happen if they bring it up across of different 
of other customers. Well, then the, the cost a little. Okay. Yeah. So, what kind of language and objections we have here? Well, this is about the product service. And like the that. product is not delivering what they expect. I had one actually. Uh, so you can you can volunteer whatever you have, and we can discuss what kind of language we can go back and discuss. The one I had was six months later. I it was an online course that they signed up for. I never actually logged on. And I couldn't log on, and it called me like just under six months before. Okay. So I just gave her her refund back because I was able to refund her the data. So if you are online, and you know that's one of the potential objections that they did not log on. So how you can proactively access this? Pro uh, how can you pro in a proactive way? Uh, Thirty day money back guarantee. How can you, in a proactive way, address this objection? It will not happen. Oh, uh, 30 day money back guarantee, and you check to see who's opened up the. You have to check out and see who is actually logging in yeah. and what you do if people will not log in. You send them a reminder. You send them a reminder. Or you pick up a phone and to call them and say, Yeah, we noticed you did not log in to, the, to your account. Or when I do, like, what I do is when somebody will come to say, did you watch this particular one? It just came out. They, oh, no, we did not log Why did not log in? Because it happened to me, like, uh, not sure who, because there was a couple of individuals last year, they actually have a problem every time they try to log in. And they never really tell me the problem. And uh, what happened is I sat with them and I showed them how to log in, and I discovered the issues, and I, sh I, sh I, I, I fixed it for them. So they became more advocate and happier, because now they can see the value. So when someone does not log in, you, can, you should implement a system, or a customer who will not show up. Like if somebody will not show up for, a, for an event or two, what you do? You follow up on them. You say, "Okay, where, where, where are you? Or, or, or what happened?" I know schedule is a big issue. However, yeah. uh, uh, if somebody will not show up for some time, he is entitled to get his money back according to the law. Oh really? Oh yeah, because under competition, I think it's competition, Compet competition act or competitive act. Under competition act, you should. Uh, only pay for the service which you receive. That's why if you sign up for a service monthly basis on a credit card on a website online and you don't log in, they will give you the money back. Because there's a something in Canada where if you don't get the service, you should be able to get your money back. And that's why there's always a question about how, how, how long you can charge a credit card before you deliver. So for a membership site, um, if you charge them on a monthly basis, you should be able to go to check with them why they did not sign up. So if they don't, well, they sign up, but if they, they don't log in, if they don't log in, yeah, yeah. <coughs> to make sure it's voluntary, uh, they don't want to take it. However, in Canada, we used to have an issue. I cannot charge you for a for a for a product without having it in your hand. So we used to have a very strong issue where if you buy from me a product online, I cannot charge your credit card till you receive the product. Okay. So all the credit card transactions will be on hold till you receive the product in your hand. So there are lots of this gray area in the market. So how can I also address this kind of interaction? Because I foresee if somebody does not log in online, he does not interact with you. So how I can overcome, how I can proactively overcoming this or, ob or observing this interaction? You should send out a survey. We used to run monthly survey, now I believe it will be quarterly survey. But you should have a survey. You should send a survey asking people what's happening 
you can ask you can ask them questionnaires you can uh, promote the interaction to make sure that they are satisfied with the service I remember did you you got from from us sometimes some email saying uh, were you satisfied or were you no. something along these lines right so this was a good uh, was a quick implementation of asking for people satisfied satisfaction now when people come and say there is a problem what you do you basically open a dialogue with them and discuss what is the issues that's right if you handle the issue early on the issue will not grow that's right uh, one more thing also you can do if you have these weekly interactions or monthly interaction with individuals is sometimes we stand and say okay so let's review let's review what we did yes last last week or two weeks ago and you can say you can tell from the interaction who is really was into the mode of receiving the information they still alive they still interacting and you can see individuals say you know what yeah I'm, we are not there yet then i i open usually a side dialogue so you should be able to consider having checkpoints on your service. Don't wait till the end. Okay? This is relevant. Did you already talk about bringing up the objection before they do? You talk about Briefly, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Now, what other objections you can have from customers? After they bought it. After they bought it. Oh, after they bought it. Yeah. I can't keep up with payments. Or I don't want to pay you for this. Like, or like, I had one lady. We agreed on a price, and then she's like, and then afterwards, she, she just said that, uh, that that's just way too expensive. So if I it's way the same value from somebody else. If she, it's way too expensive, you already have the twenty-two objection we discussed. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that happened to me. Yeah, so they were paying, and then like we agreed on the price. They paid half the deposit, and they refused to pay the other half because they were just uh, you don't know. Uh, they were trying to like nitpick details of the contract. I'm like, I gave you everything on a USB stick. I don't know what you want. Yeah, it's not the point. No, the point here is sometimes when we deliver, we don't expect people will receive the value we anticipate people will agree on the value of this material so if you fail of highlighting the value and what's unique about this material all the time during the journey with the customer they will come up exactly with what you said if you are designing my logo and they say you know what yeah I will not pay you the two I pay you one point I will not pay you the second point which is the second 50% and I have here somebody who did it for me at a fraction of your price, there is a problem here. Because your customer had a window to go to actually contact somebody else. Or they came across. Or they came across and you did not have the active conversation with them for, or the trust that they will come back to you. Like I have so many people in my, in my program they will come and say, yeah, we are now joining this particular program and uh, we would rather go there than coming here. So, yeah, that's great. Now let's discuss it. So because I have this trust. Right. And I, I did have the trust with her. And then you believed you have the trust, but you didn't have it. Well, she told me all the time, like, she's like, I want to keep using you and you're so great in these videos and the logos and everything you've been doing is so awesome. And then the last thing that I tried to do before, she kind of jipped out and sent me a huge email about me all these problems that she had the whole time or something like that. Yeah. It, it was the worst thing. It sounds like she couldn't afford it. No, it sounds like she was trying to keep up. She was Free. trying to get out of She was, because she went to another marketing firm in Lethbridge and it was just way more expensive to build her website because she, because I can't build a website for her that she needed. And Oh, she, he's, they sucked all her money. Yeah, pretty much. So she was pretty bad. Anyway, 
So the biggest objection for customers is customers want to discontinue the service. Right. So that is why you must have a free or it's recommended to have uh, no cost, no obligation experience period or trial period if your service affords it. So if you offer somebody a free analysis of their accounting system, this will be the period I'm talking about. If you offer them a free uh, one month uh, for a dollar or one month for like, um, yeah. there's actually a membership of $27 a month and you start with the first month or the first 14 days for a dollar. Right. That's it. So this particular low entry trial, it's important because if people will come in and practice the system, experience the system, they may decide if they want to continue or not. Yeah. Now my one concern is, gyms do this all the time, where they're like, yeah, get your first couple months for free, your first month for free, but then it's on contract that you pay the $100, $200 every month, the next six months, and it's like, yeah, you get the first two months for free, but you're forced to pay the two hundred dollars for the rest of the four months. If you don't cancel within the first two months, mm, yeah. Actually, some of these no, will I say your last two months are free, so you pay for the yeah for you know eleven not, ten months, and then you get twelve months or something. Some of my daughter's program worked, too, but it is different. Hate it. I hate it because I I got messed up at World Health because they're like I'm like yeah like. I'm here for the summer, and you said that I get the first two weeks free for like whatever I want, and then they, they made me sign up for like a two month plan for when I was there in the summer, and then I was forced to continue it later, and then I called head office and tried to like find everything, and I didn't even get my money back, but at least I canceled and didn't have to continue to pay after the summer. So. That's why World Health, you only go for the 14 days, or you go for the seven for the one week the seven free entrances and that's it yeah, I if you sign up uh, there are some other service right now where it gives you two months free where you sign up for a year yeah so they charge you 10 months instead of 12 months that's, yeah. yeah yeah audible and hootsuite are like that right you so know like the whole month's free just put your credit card down yeah yeah and then you read that fine print that says and then we charge you afterwards 30 something yeah. dollars yeah it's smart on their end you know, for a business I did that that's smart it's easier for them they're like ah, I like it I don't even have to pull my credit card again it's already on file right it's easily charged right? well, it's very easy smart in their so way. if I, if a customer will come to you and say I it does not work for me I want to get my I want to cancel what you do uh, put them into a free program downgrade them well, you talk to them, right? If you down, go, yeah, you talk to them. If yeah. you downgrade them right away, it means you agree. So the recommendation usually, if you have somebody who wants to discontinue the program, it's another overcoming objection exercise. Feel, felt, found, or agree, ag acknowledge, and advance. Now, where do you want them to? Where do you want to advance them to? Do you want to advance them to continue the program? Or do you want to advance them to let them go in a quiet way? So there's a couple of... I advance people, by the way, to let them go in a quiet way because they were just spinning apart. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. So, so I'm thinking of the membership plan. You've got, you know, you've got hundreds of people going through the thing. You can't be calling each one of them or you know, being able to catch people who do that. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, and you're do, like this membership program that you have, like a group coaching program that's live, and they want to back out, then you can have the conversation and get it. But if you have an online membership program where you know eventually you want to have thousands of people going through that. That's why you have customer service. That's why when people cancel, they cancel through the customer service. They don't cancel through a cancel program. I, I've seen cancellation like Adobe, yeah. where you cancel, they say, oh, tell me which one it is, and they list the objectives, objections. Yep. And then I, I, I know I know the trick, right? So if I say, oh, it's too expensive, how about if we give you 50% off for the next six months? <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. That's oh, they do that. Oh, yeah. they do that. Of course yeah. they You do. just cancel. And then they'll ask you that. And you just, yeah. sometimes they'll even give you free. For the time. question for you will be, 
is it much is it more effective to go behind and you target audience yeah it's the getting or more. it's much easier for you to keep these guys in in the loop much easier to do that <laughs> okay yeah they opened up the wallet before they're they're on board so how many objections like which one of these do you think will have objections? Every one of them. That's right? Yeah. So I can have objections for audience listening to my message. It no. will not work for me. Yeah, Does it really work? Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. That's right? Yeah. I can have objections for lead. I my 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 phone number is uh, very secretive. My I don't like to, that's why we said we hit spam. That's why we promise not to to spam them by phone calls. I may have um, objections in prospective, which we uh, in prospect, and we talked about twenty some only, on it cost too much. We talked before in the previous course on the eighty three different objections. That's right. Now people in the program, what's the program? They still have their own. Objections. So the common objection for people in the program, the system, the program is not working for them. They don't see a change. So if somebody will come to you and say, "I don't see a change. I don't see a, uh, a progress or a development," mm -hmm. how you can address this objection? Well, you just work them through like what you've actually done to them, and then ask them. Or you just ask them what they've gotten out of it so far. Testimonials would be another one. Uh, so if somebody will come to you and say, I don't see my, this program works for me. I don't see any advancement or any development. How you can overcome this objection? Silence. <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> no, no, no. Silence. Let them tell you more. Because I, I, yeah. if they don't see advancement, there's a lot more in there. So if you document the entry level, which is uh, something I always needed to do for everyone work for me in the very first day of hiring. I said, I wish I can take a photo of you, a photo of your knowledge and your brain and your skill sets. And you'll see how you've shifted. Yeah. And yeah. after two years working with me, yeah. what happened to your life? That's it. Lost hair, about 50 pounds. Yeah. So, uh, no, uh, so that's why, yeah, right. that's why you usually, uh, when you do this uh, kind of sessions, it uh, falls behind the, behind, behind the bottom. That's why when you do these particular uh, sessions as discovery sessions, you will always have questions about performance. You can ask, when, where is your business? How much money do you make? Um, how do you feel? Where is it? Like, you should be able to ask questions, which I believe all of you are doing it. And this documentation of questions are very important. So if somebody will pull you out in <coughs> an objection because they want to cancel, you have to be ready to do what? To pull from their folder these particular questionnaires and say okay so three weeks ago <coughs> you have this what do you have right now so you have to have some sort of a baseline uh, you should have some sort of a baseline right. and what you should do is you run them the baseline questionnaires again before telling them how the baseline was three months or three weeks ago if you find they were really not shifted, the next step is to talk about what values you provide and you ask them how they apply it themselves. And this we call it like divert guilt. So we know that in coaching, everybody will need to do the work. The difference between a coach and a consultant. What's a consultant mean? Consultant does the work, right? Yeah, so the work Mike is doing is more like consultant, consultant. and uh, 
the more information they provide about how to cat categorize few things and how to allocate few things, it's a little bit of coaching. So the work Mike is doing is maybe like 70, 80, maybe 90% consultant work, and there is maybe 10, 30%, you agree? Coaching or guidance. The work I do is completely the, the, the opposite. The work I do is more than 100% coaching if I am not consulted for specific tasks, that's right? So in a consultation, in a, in a coaching world, you should be able to sit with individuals and see where are they stuck. They may not have the changes because they did not do the work. So when you open a discussion with them and they start to feel that they are not doing the work, what you will do? You will say, you know what, so let me work with you one-on-one -on -one to guide you through the work. Let's spare some more time. Let's give you an extension of a month. So you can achieve the same results. So, sorry, what was the main objection again? Is it, the program does not work for them. They don't receive. Is this for general. They don't receive the value you provide. Customers. This okay. for customers. Yeah. So if somebody say I don't see the value, I did not feel the transformation. You can do the baseline questionnaires again with them, and if you don't see any changes between both of them. What you will do, you will just, as uh, Sandin was talking about, you will go back and you stretch the value of what they supposed to be received, and you start to question how they apply this information. And you are always positioned to help them to provide, uh, to apply the information. So if you don't apply it, let's just work together to get it done. Make sense? Okay, um, what is the uh, next stage we have is we call it referral customers or customers who will refer other people. So what kind of language we should talk to, what kind of information these people will need to know? Treat. Yeah, so, tool. and what they need to tell. So what these people need to understand is the benefits for them when they refer some other customers. So what benefits they will get when they will get other customers to join the same program. Okay. What is the common objection here? It would be the same as before because it didn't work for me. This, you know, why would I refer you? No, no. This is our customer. This is our happy, cu our satisfied customers. So What's our objection? I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. So, right. how you can overcome these objections? Let's sit together and if, and it, I will share with you who I am looking for, and then I'll start to demonstrate the benefits or the pain points. Well, I think that another way to address an objection is saying. Do you give anything for Christmas? Do you have a Christmas list? Do you can give us a gift certificate? Okay. The value of the gift certificate is three hundred dollars, but I'll charge you fifty bucks, whatever that is, so you can look like a hero. What is the other objection? Like I don't refer a program I don't experience. But they did experience because they're customers. Not necessary. Some of them may not experience the program. Okay. Sorry. I don't know anyone your, your, your thing was, let's work through who you know. Yeah, let's work through who, who, who you know. But if somebody will say, I cannot refer a program that I did not experience, what's, cool. the, what's the answer for them? Perhaps you could experience together. Well, <laughs> Sell them a program for whatever price, and then say you will give them all that money back if they refer somebody to you. This is one approach. The other approach is, to show them enough testimonials and let them meet other people. Yeah. And it, it bothers me when somebody like this who does not do it on money. Because many will refer these customers and they will get commission back end. That's right. 
So if somebody will, will refer someone for a commission and they come and say, oh, we need to experience the program first, you are not here for the joint venture. You are here for something else. Make sense? Okay. What about the last... Um, uh, so this is on the referral customer, which is here. What about the upselling? What are the objections for upselling? So what language first for upselling a product? What language? Yes. So if you want to upsell a product, you should ex elaborate on the benefits and what features they will get. That's right. What are the objections for upselling? I can only afford this product. I can only afford this product. So how you can overcome this uh, objection? I'd ask, I'd find out, OK, I understand. What's in your budget? And then I'll find out their need, their pain point, and then I'll connect this upselling to that. OK. Perhaps. That's, that's my guess. OK. So I uh, basically, ca I can come and say, yeah, I agree uh, that you may, you may feel you don't afford this program. However, here is, are the benefits of, my pro of the new program. And this is how it will help you achieve the next, the second level, that's right? Yeah. What other objections they may have to, uh, be ups to, to upsell? What about time? If they say, oh, we are completely overwhelmed and we don't have time to the new program, so what you will do? I'll talk about the benefits of how to help time. Yes? Help time. Is it? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> okay. So when people you try to upsell somebody's a program, you talk about benefit and features, and you can overcome the objection of you don't have time, or the objection of they can only afford the current program and they cannot afford the extra or the upselling. So whenever you come to I cannot afford or it's too expensive you go back and the same objections of today, which is how, what does it cost you if you don't join? How, how you can achieve on, on benefits? Um, the last part here are the retired customers. And I always have this question. How many of us will have a mailing list or a communication with somebody who are not buying product from them anymore. Like a customer who exited your service and does not get from you anything anymore. So they're not unsubscribed. They're just not, they're just sitting there in your mailing list. They just uh, finished the program. They are not doing anything yeah, else. So what you, what you sell, what you sell these people? More programs. You can sell. Are you following Mike? Yeah, probably referral. You can sell them a referral? Sell them a referral program. What else you can sell them? Other people program or alternative offers. Yeah. That's right? Yeah. So if I have an alternative offer or a different program, I can use this as target audience, or in reality they are lead, and I can send them information about different programs. You're saying other people's programs? Yep. Okay. I guess if they're no longer doing your program, then you can you kind of re retarget them for a joint venture or something. Yep. But the problem is, are they hot enough or not? Will they read your emails or not? Probably. So quite often, we... Um, unsubscribe from energy programs and the phone programs and we'll switch suppliers for our home that's right how many of you will get a phone call like a year later or two years later and say you were on this service and we know you switch and now we have a new offer for you oh yeah okay so tell us and rogers will still keep the information of people who right. unsubscribed yeah. and what they will do Six months later, what they will do? Follow up. They will make a phone call. 
they say we know that you unsubscribe from our service and you switch to another supplier however we have now this brand new unbeatable uh, offer would you like to give it a try you have a special script for that style right yeah like script for that yep yep and the difficulties we I seen is we as a trainer, as a coaches, as a consultant, as whatever we do, what we do, we never been trained in sales. And when we never been trained in sales, we don't have script. So we stand in front of individuals, they come to us and say, it's too expensive, I cannot afford it. We feel uh, uh, sympathy with them and say, yeah, I understand, yeah, it's very expensive. Thank you very much. And then you sit at the end of the month and say, okay, I spoke to like 20 people and none of them can afford it. That's right. So that's why this particular, um, I'm, I'm trying to make it concise into one sheet. So if you even, the sheet which you mess is literally the same information. So I'm trying to make it concise into one sheet. You can have a sales process and you can have sales objection script. You can customize them. And if you attend sales in the closing deal workshops, you will have the book or the workbook which has all the uh, different objections and you can do it uh, in a different, you can customize it to your own thing. Okay? So even retired customers, you can still have a conversation with them. Okay? Any questions? So what is the next step? So what is the next step for you guys to do? Make money. Just go to Bahamas and spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the next step to implement this knowledge? To implement, oh, you mean to, okay. So put down the messages at each stage. So you should be able to put the messages at each stage. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so the next step for you guys is to go and, and Understand these messages and put them as at each stage right. and write them down and then practice them. See when somebody come and you say this, what will happen? What's the reactions? What's the reflections, right? There's only 10 and we discovered with Mike there are nine stages. You can compromise, you can uh, compress some of them like uh, uh, Bakri last time he said he had for $20, which is, I doubt it. Somebody will pay, will, will charge him $20 if they get him into prospecting. So they will charge him $20 per prospect. That's right, this is what he said last time in. Uh, he said something about that. He was gonna pay 20 bucks to get the prospects. That's right. Yeah. So if he doesn't have a good overcoming objection for the prospects he just lost 20 bucks he just lost 20 bucks and i highly doubt that somebody will go through the whole process for uh 20 dollars okay any questions where is he anyways hmm? where is he he's uh, coming uh, to, he, he cannot come mondays because he works in this chemical company so he'll only he will only watch mondays and he will come on saturdays yeah, this one this coming Saturday. Hmm. Yep. So, a, yes, sir. Have you guys been over cold calling? Not today. Not today, but you mean in terms of script or just uh, just like getting past the gatekeeper or secretary? Right? Just wondering. I'm not sure where you're asking because none of our business will get us past the secretary. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I believe in this book there are lots of scripts which can be also relevant to cold calling. Uh, well, gatekeeper, there's a script for gatekeeper, right? 
gatekeeper's pain points. Yeah, it's, you have to be creative, but you don't want to, like, if, if someone fools my assistant into getting through to me, that's almost like a, a, a no-go. Don't, don't be deceptive in any way. You know, and be honest. Want your business, right? Yeah. Someone calling you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. It's... Because they're going to be like, send an email, but I'm not here to send an email, right? I'm here to talk to someone. Okay, if somebody will ask you to send an email or send the information by email, there is a script for it here, which basically will say, can we discuss it more to customize, if I remember correctly, I, w I will send you an email, however, I will need more information to send you more relevant information to your problems, than just send you too much or too, f too many of... Uh, of information because we have so much info we do so much we serve so many businesses and you want to customize and the e information an email is actually a, a step a step in the door because if I see an email and it's intriguing if it's well written and it, it intrigues me I'll probably phone the guy back but, but it will intrigue you only if I know what's your pain point so having more discussion with the gatekeeper to get more about the pain point of the organization will help you getting the email or maybe that is a call, a call. The call is about I want, I'm writing a book I want to interview the top leaders in the industry is your boss available I'm going to sell you something this is a different this is, this is a different <laughs> strategy is that a liar what? no, no. This is a different this is that one of the reasons write an article this is, this is one of the reasons why you need to pre-sell and pre-market your book before writing it because if you have a book and the book has all the information online, that this book is forthcoming or is coming soon, you can call and have this script. Like I got into the ATB bank residence and Royal Bank residence by just having a same trick. It was not a trick, it was part of my plan. Because I want to interview these people for my book. Yeah. Yeah. Tricky yeah. plan, but it was a plan. <laughs> it was a plan. So <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, if you are in this, this is why, one of the questions coming back is, how are you approaching these people here? That's right. And are your customers actually these organizations? So is ATB Bank or Royal Bank your, or your, your customers? No. If they are not cost your customers, you don't go on this route. If is the CEOs of these companies are your customers? Like I know, a fr I know a friend, he is writing, he wrote a book which is how to MC a wedding. And he got so many business out of that because he will know where people are booking weddings up front and they will send them these books for free and the book will show up at the door. And they will have at the end a card if you're looking for someone to, M to MC and you don't want to MC it for, I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. So for like three, four bucks, he will get a $500 engagement. And he was just busy all, all weekends. So it's a function of where is your business. But having a book is one of the ways to, like what Shamir was saying, like seamlessly getting in the door by interview in direct way. Mm. Does this answer your question? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So on the email, you should ask, yes, I will send you an email. However, I will need to ask you a few more questions to customize the information I'm sending to your need. Because I hate you wasting your time reading more information. So if you say, I hate your boss will waste his time reading information, he doesn't need to read, she will start to talk to you. That's right? Hmm. Make sense? Totally. Is there any other objections you wanna brainstorm around it? So we have last 20 minutes, so what do you want to do guys as a finish? Do you want to reflect on the content? Do you want to just bring another point to discuss? Uh, what do you like to do? Mike, what do you like to do now? Uh, hear what everyone else has to say. <laughs> uh, everything was quite straightforward and uh, yeah, just 
reinforces some of the stuff I'm already doing and adds a couple other uh, dimensions to what I'm doing as well. Was it too much or was it uh, good enough or was it? Good enough. Why did you laugh, hmm? Why did you laugh? Because he was trying to pass the buck. He said, I want to hear what everybody else is saying. <laughs> Okay, Sandin, so what do you... Uh, definitely got my gears turning. Uh, I like the first part and in defining the stages of the customer and and how it how I can make it more efficient so when I call people, I can... or I call them or I see them, I know exactly what to do when that happens. And that kind of helps take the stress off me as well so that do this with other people in my business. I can say, yeah, if you're talking to somebody, this is what you're going to give them, this is how you're going to act. And then the objection side was really good to know. And I, I want to learn more about it. I think we just kind of, except for the first part, we kind of touched the service, the objectives, and really kind of like, who are you being? The, the issues with the objection is you must sound genuine yeah. or genuinely interesting in their objections. And sometimes it can be tough if you're frustrated with them as a client. Sometimes it can be tough if you're frustrated as a client and it's not a process where you can learn it in one day. No. Because you have to feel this language, you have to have it inside you <coughs> and your voice, and your tone, your voice, your gestures after the objections will reflect. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody will come and say, oh, I don't like what you do, I don't get offended. I used to go back and say, okay, so tell me which part you don't like or what did you attend? And so I go back and <coughs> so it takes some time for you to practice this. No, and that's why I said we just like... And you want to role play. Find something mm -hmm. you can role play with and they just yeah. hammer you with everything. You can write everything down. Like for my staff, like I have a presentation written out for any of my staff. They could actually walk in and just run it. Everything's there. For objections? Objections. Oh, it wow. could be objections on the phone, on the phone yeah. script, or it could be objections in a presentation. And by running it through, it, it's it's there so they can read it and reread it and reread it. And then after a while, it's like it's just it, it just becomes second nature. Right. It just rolls off your tongue because you've already seen how it was handled before or, or the, what the response might be because you're already anticipating where it's coming from. Wow. But after you after you write it, like write it down, like what we've done here, and then find someone to role play with it. Okay. And then they just change it up and change it up and then see how you respond to it. And after a while, the, your thought process will become more genuine. I like that plan. Yeah. And you have to uh, to start slowly. So when you have these sales calls, you have to be slow. Yeah. Because if you are fast when, when you know the information and in the objection, you'll be then slow. Then you're going to be like, you're not listening, you're just saying it. Yeah. So it's very important to just keep your your, your peace of mind together. To keep your to keep to keep yourself centered. Yeah. Sometimes when we get these objections and people don't know what to do, they will feel excited, they have anxiety, and then they start to faster and faster discussions. You know. So yeah. So this is uh, one thing about objections. Cool. Thank you. Kevin. So what? What's your reaction on whatever you capture? Oh wow, I got so much gold. Especially just waste to deal with objections, right? You know, waste to deal. Being prepared. People want to cancel, right? Yeah. I lost three sales because I didn't get secure deposit, so I just need to remember to do that. Secure deposit right there. Yeah, you need secure deposit, you need to have uh uh square or whatever tools so people can put credit card right away. You got a square yet? Yeah, a square at home. You can run the square app, like uh, for a fraction of, of percentage, you can actually run manually. You don't need to have that card, like... Uh, swiper? The swiper with you. Yeah. You know, so you need the square. You, need, you have to be ready for people to pay you money. I don't like when people just do the money email. I hate it. Or you can you can invoice them through PayPal. Email. Yeah, but I see I my mine comes through the QuickBooks invoice, so I send out the invoice with the e-transfer instructions. Yep. 
Yeah. So okay. for for me, for me, it wouldn't it's work with me. Like if I want to get people to sign up to a program, they have to sign right away. They, I, I, it doesn't work for me. Like when you, when they go and just having the, uh, uh, the email transfer. Yeah. And uh, the other problem is when people having email transfer, you cannot charge them. So you have to do it manually. So for me, like another four, five, six hours, I'm just doing nonsense things. I don't want to do it. So I prefer just to have a credit card with the system, system works, that's it. Not everybody will ask me to re-imprint re the invoices, okay, but <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I will send you the, the rest of the balance of the invoices today, so. Sure. Yeah. Shamir, so what is, well, it's just, uh, it crunches a lot of the features or everything puts it together. And it's, what I liked about it is that we segregated, you know, in this area, th these are the kinds of messages you got to put in. Different messages here and different messages here. Before, I, w I wasn't really paying attention to that. I would just talk about benefits and pain points all throughout. And I think it's important to keep the two separate. So. If you talk about benefits and pain points here without features, yeah. people will not pay money for anything yeah. because people will not pay for the benefit. People will only pay for the features. Yeah. And we spend before we spend more time discussing what kind of material you can have here and how your website should be positioned because if you have people here buying it's too early yeah because we are not in a book uh, sales business right right uh, like, like, those, those websites should have they're just GA the first phase the w website is the first kind of phase of this thing marketing process the website can be here yeah Another version of the website can be here if you sell online. Yeah, if that sales page could be on there, right? Yeah, a sales, uh, if you deliver online, you have a third version of your website here. So your website may have different parts. But the very front of the website will be about what? About leadership, about what people can do yeah. as benefits. Not about the workshop, not about the books. Yeah. Once you move them in, to subscription situation or they put their emails and they know the material, yeah. you can talk a little bit about what you can do and then later on you can talk about what they buy. So if you want to plan to sell online and do the follow up online and you have the tools, you have to consider having four version or five versions or five different parts of the website. Which is bothers me because sometimes I go, I found this website for a healer and you know, healers, it's a personal relationship. So when people pay, a he pay for somebody as a healer, they have to spend some time with them first. And you will find people say, oh, you must have a book now on your website. Okay, like if I go to this website, why will I book now? Like I will never book now on a website from somebody healing he if, if you don't know them yeah. if i don't know them if i don't exercise them if i don't experience them yeah. however Maybe instead of saying book now it's like set up a meeting or let's talk or something I, like because you should have a call to action no this is a she wants she she will get you to spend about a hundred dollar to subscribe to a appointment booking software and on all the websites she is doing it has book now so I met this individual who runs a clinic in uh, Sylvan Lake. I said, uh, how many of your booking for the last three years came through the website? She said, zero. Mm -hmm. I said, so why do you have to pay for the tool? If zero will come through the website, why? Because you've got this particular co uh, consultant told her she must have a book now so people can book on the website. But people are not booking for three years. So only, what, what? Yeah. So only for repeat customers. I mean, so the pain the pain point of a practitioner a healer especially is somebody calls and says, "I want a book." They've already decided to book. Where are you going to put them? Right. So now she has to spend a time on the phone saying, "Well, is this work? No. Does that work? No. Does that work?" And then if it works, then about you know, <coughs> two days before, oh, I got to change that, reschedule that. That's when a book book the appointment really works for them. So not for the first time people. So you're really looking at the customers. The, the same yes. Thing like the massage the therapist, yes. it's perfect to have a book for Oh, yeah. Even healers, you don't want to spend time, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. say, oh, she's got an opening there. There yeah. we go. We're in. Yeah. yeah, but if the healer does not have in her sales cycle here, yeah, that people will go to website. Yeah. I would say that it, I, I would say she hasn't uh, broadcasted enough that she has a book now on the website. That's Maybe what I would say is the problem. The no one, the absolutely zero is going there. Well, yes and no. The other observation before we go from this point, just to, sorry to cut here. The other observation I have is, who are her, his her customers? She'll say everybody because everybody needs that. Yes, but the real customer she has are people in the 65 to 80 years old that who don't they like don't. Computers. They don't have, yeah, they don't oh, have yeah, Facebook. One foot in the grave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is majority of, like majority yeah, of these like healers, customers. you will find they have this problem. It's the same for the personal development. Like many of the people who are looking like highly sensitive people, personal development, yes, it's okay. How many of them live online? They don't live online because these highly sensitive people, when they see stuff they don't like, what they will happen? They will get emotionally engaged. Mm -hmm. So will you like them to be emotionally engaged? Yeah. They themselves, they don't like it. That's why they don't have a presence online. There are so many individuals I know now, or I know by now, who will say, we don't like to follow the news on Facebook because yeah. it just, it makes us sad. The thing is, there's a, there's, a, there's a niche there where you can provide a safe environment where people can get together as a community across the world and, you know, they, they feel the connection. I think that's, for these healer types, that's what you want to promise as a benefit of joining the webinars and all that stuff, is, is you have that connection with others. Yeah. Okay, so any, any last uh, final thoughts at your end, guys? Going? Okay, so thank you, and that's, uh, wow, I owe you seven minutes. Copyright 2017 Win Your Brand. All rights reserved. This video is subject to copyright owned by Win Your Brand. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this video is expressly prohibited. Unless Win Your Brand has explicitly granted its prior written consent, all other rights reserved.